Medications are really the mainstay of how we treat atrial fibrillation, and there's three groups of medications to really think about. Um, the first and foremost is that they're heart rate slowing drugs. They're very simple drugs. They're drugs that we use for a variety of things in medicine. Um, the classes are beta blocker drugs, calcium channel blocker drugs, and many people are on these drugs already for the treatment of hypertension, coronary artery disease, um, other peripheral vascular disease. But what these drugs do is control the heart rate. Uh, what happens in atrial fibrillation is the heart can race. And again, sitting here comfortably having this conversation, my heart rate should be in a normal zone rather than 150 beats per minute. So what this class of drugs does is it slows the heart rate so people can function on a day in and day out basis without having their heart racing all the time. The second class of drugs are called arrhythmia prevention drugs or antiarrhythmia drugs. And these drugs, the design of these drugs is to prevent the arrhythmia from happening in the first place. So they're primarily preventative. They can be used to convert the arrhythmia from fib to the normal rhythm, but generally how they're used is you're in the normal rhythm, you take the drug every day, and it prevents the arrhythmia from coming back. There are several different classes within the arrhythmia prevention drugs. Some of them don't have very many side effects. Some of them have a lot of side effects. So you try to use the safest drugs first. The last group of drugs that we use are blood thinners or anticoagulation drugs. And the reason we use these drugs is to prevent stroke. There's a variety of blood thinning drugs, some of which are very simple drugs like aspirin. But then there's more potent drugs. The common, the, the oldest and most common is Coumadin or Warfarin. And then there's newer evolving drugs. Um, they're called the, the NOAX or novel anticoagulants. These drugs do the same thing as Coumadin yet don't require any monitoring and they're generally uh, felt to be um, safer in some patient populations.